Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Broken Sword The Shadow of the Templars. In the last episode, we spoke to some of the guests here at the Hotel Ubu, including some you know, Nobel Prize winner, whatever. But more importantly, the fantastic Lady Piermont. Oh man, our little partner in crime because we managed to sneak our way into this hotel room uh, by stealing a key and it happens to be the room next to the killer. Merlin, Khan, he goes by a few names it turns out. And so yeah, we're now in his connecting room and we can try and hopefully find a way in. I'm thinking it's going to be behind this bed. Maybe there's some sort of secret lever. Uh, maybe there's something... Ooh, in the wardrobe. Let's have a little looky, shall we? It was a massive mahogany wardrobe. There was nothing in the wardrobe apart from a vague lingering smell of camphor. I don't know what camphor is, but that's that's fine. Whatever, doesn't matter. I think it's going to be, yeah, something down here looks suspicious. Why? What is this? A cabinet stood beside the bed. The cabinet was empty, but it smelt of onions. No kidding, it really did. I mean, I don't know what onions are, but no. <laughs> okay, I do know what onions are. The window. Oh, are we going to have to climb out and around and in? Oh, okay, we are. Oh, I really thought it would be behind the bed. Never mind. Let's get in there. This is getting intense. Oh, we made it. We made it. The killer's room. Let's order room service. <laughs> Up the bill. What do we have here? The cabinet had no drawers, just a single door. The assassin had been too smart to leave incriminating evidence beside his bed. No onions either. What a shame. The bed was several times larger than the narrow cot I'd been given at the place I was staying. The bed was freshly made, and the crisp white sheets told me nothing about the killer's habits. Hmm. It was the battered leather briefcase I'd seen Plantar carrying just before he died. I searched the interior of the briefcase, but as I'd half expected, it was empty. Darn. No secret compartments or anything? No, I'm guessing it's not like the ones made by Q <laughs> for Bond. Uh, what else we got around here? Mirror? Wardrobe? The closet was a solid, impressive piece of antique furniture. The closet was a. Oh. The closet was. No, wait, what? What is that? The closet. No, don't close it. Hang on. There's something in there, right? Yeah, there's two dots. <laughs> How do I get that second dot? Okay, I guess whatever this is, I can't interact with it. Even though there's definitely two dots there. It's almost like I want to open the other door. But no, he just closes that one. Okay, fine. Bit strange, but we'll leave it for now. I bet there's something really important in there. Uh, what have I not checked? I checked the bed. Oh man, really? Nothing in here? I don't believe that. It was Khan. I had the kind of feeling in my stomach that would usually send me running to the bathroom. Okay, that makes more sense. As Khan opened the wardrobe, I was sure I was dead. But he grabbed his pants quickly and didn't even see me. 
I didn't usually spy on men getting changed. But this guy was a killer, and I didn't want any surprises. He left his checkered pants on the bed. Man, what an idiot. What did we just write? That was so close. Just as I was searching Khan's hotel room, he came in. I hid in the wardrobe, my heart was thumping so hard. I am amazed he didn't hear me. You're one lucky man, George. Let's check his pants. Sorry, trousers. What do we got here? I flipped the pants over. It looked like there could be something in this pocket. I had that kind of feeling you only get from searching still warm pants. I found an ordinary matchbook. No matches, no clues. But as I pulled it from the pocket, a strong thread came with it. A thread with a metal tag on the end. Ooh. I pulled on the metal tag and the thread came out of the pants. It was like pulling out a ripcord. Parachute pants. <laughs> Is that it for this pocket? The pocket was empty. Yeah. This one? I found nothing in the pocket. All right. Can I flip them back again? Anything down here? No. I turned the pants over again. Ooh. I searched the pocket gingerly and found a pass card. It read Thomas Merlin, Gruber Electronics Corporation. Oh, he's, he's got his own business? Or well, la-dee-da. I wondered if the guy was colorblind. There was nothing in the pocket. There was nothing else in the secret pocket. All right, I think that pretty much is it. No no comment on the mud. Oh, wait. The pocket was empty. No, all right, yeah. Yeah, we're done here. Let's check what we... Oh, yeah. Uh, more updates. He left his trousers... Okay, so he called some pants there and then trousers here. Make up your mind, George. He's left his trousers on the bed. I found a matchbook with the name Club... Alamu and a fake ele oh fake electrician's ID card. Yeah, it must be quite tricky to be a a killer and a business owner. It's not easy being self-employed. Okay, let's check what we grabbed that that weird metal tag thing. Is it here? Did we not? There was nothing else in the pockets of the killer's pants. What? Where is it then? The matchbook bore a pattern of swirling color and the words Club Alamut. Oh, or maybe that was just to reveal the secret pocket or something, I guess. It was the card I'd found in the hotel bedroom. It read Thomas Merlin, Gruber Electronics Corporation. All right, so we've got a couple more leads here. I mean, this is a fake one, but this was the matchbook Club bore... Alamu. So he's obviously been there. Might need to pay a, a visit to that club. Let's take Lady Piermont with us. She'd love that. Um, yeah, let's let's call it there for this place. Head back downstairs. Oh, is he going to question us? Because he must see the key's been taken. Let's just check. What now, monsieur? Uh, okay, no, but we could ask him about these things we just found. <laughs> Probably not the key, right? Do you recognize this key? That is the property of the Hotel Ubu. Correct. May I ask how it found its way from the little ook to your pocket? Would you believe it was put there by a poltergeist? No, monsieur. The hotel is regularly serviced by an exorcist. If we had a ghost, Father Fécond would have flushed it out. I suppose you want the key back. Not especialement. The room is vacant. Since you are so determined to conduct your little investigation, I won't stop you. Oh, I thought he was talking about Luigi for a second. <laughs> but that's nice of him to let us keep the key. Does this matchbook mean anything to you? No, monsieur. Does this pass mean anything to you? That is Monsieur Merlin's property. That's right. Merlin the murderer. I want to see what he's left in your safe. Impossible. 
I cannot betray his confidence, no matter what you say he's done. You're making a big mistake. Maybe. I can live with that. A murderer? Are you sure? Positive. Hmm. I mean, we can't really prove it right now. So I don't blame the guy. I wonder if that's something we still need to actually do, is get to the safe. I feel like... Maybe, but not right now. I think we've got another thing to deal with with this uh, this club, which I'm hoping will appear on the map. Let's just check in with Lady Piermon. How you doing, my love? Hi, ma'am. Hello, George. What can I do for you now? This is the key to room 21. That's next to the room taken by that rotten Merlin, isn't it? Yes, and it's vacant. Really? How convenient. Maybe it was my imagination, but I had an uncomfortable feeling about this situation. Uh, yeah. I found this matchbook in Merlin's bedroom. It came from the Club Alamut. It might be useful to find out if that club is in Paris, George. I found this pass in Merlin's room. So? That deceitful little man is passing himself off as an electrician, is he? Uh-huh. This guy probably has a million faces. I showed the pass to the clerk, hoping he'd give me Merlin's papers. But he wouldn't buy it. He's too scared. I'll give him something to be scared of. Follow me, George! Oh, here she goes again. Did you place a package from Merlin in the hotel safe? I did, madame. And did my friend here show you Merlin's identification? Indeed he did, but... What's the problem? He isn't Merlin. A mere academic detail. Give him the package. But that is against the law. I happen to be a justice of the peace, you silly man. I am the law. If he tries anything, shoot him, George. My pleasure, Lady Piermont. One moment, please. You know, I haven't enjoyed myself this much since Greenham Common. I don't know what I would have done without you, Lady Piermont. Voila, monsieur. Le manuscrit de Monsieur Merlin. Thanks. How satisfying. An Anglo-American alliance that actually worked. The clerk had given me a tightly rolled sheet of parchment. I decided not to unroll it until I was safely back in Nico's apartment. Oh, there's that special relationship. That special UK-US relationship in action. Oh, Lady Piermon, what would I do without you? Let's run away together. Let's elope. Let's go to Vegas and just get married. Oh, I'm, I'm getting carried away. I'll come back for you, sweetheart. Don't you worry about that. I couldn't leave the hotel with the manuscript. It was probably what those thugs were looking for. Oh. Okay. Um, do we need to sneak out the back? Where is that? What's that? It was the ancient manuscript which Khan had stolen from Plantau. Okay, so maybe if we can't go at the front, I reckon we do need to go at the back. Um, hence why we could go out there, or we, or we could go down there from the outside. Can we climb down? The cobbles of the alleyway looked very distant and very hard. Hmm. Perhaps not. Perhaps not. I wonder if Lady Piermont will do us another favour. You know, it's not like we've asked for enough already, but you never know. Hi, ma'am. Hello, George. What can I do for you now? This is what Merlin was so keen to hide. Really? Well, that fuss for a sample of wallpaper. It's some kind of manuscript, and it looks to be very old. If I was you, I'd keep it well out of sight until you're clear of this place. That's exactly what I was thinking. I could roll it up and put it down my pants. No, no, that wouldn't do at all. You'd attract far too much attention. <laughs> you just wait, Lady Piermont. We'll have our time together. Um, 
No, that hasn't worked. Can I hide it in something else? Maybe I need to combine it with the nose. Hmm. No. Maybe not. Uh. I'm really not sure then. I couldn't leave the hotel. It was probably with the. What about this guy? Hello again. I really need his newspaper or something and hide it in there. Have you ever seen this old manuscript before? You know what it is, don't you? You are in great danger. Put the manuscript back and leave here. What's going on? I can say no more. What is going on with this guy? He is very weird. At least with the murderer, we know who's a murderer. This guy, being very cryptic. Does the name on this matchbook mean anything to you? Indeed, it does. For Alamut was the home of the old man of the mountains. You do not know him? No, I don't. We're dumb. Do you recognize this card? No, I do not. Do you recognize this key? No, I do not. All right, enough of that then. Thanks for your help. Goodbye. Oh, wait a minute. I know what I should have done. Back upstairs, hang on a minute. Can we just throw the parchment off the edge and then pick it up outside? Maybe we should have tried that. I knew this was no way to treat an ancient manuscript, but I couldn't let it fall into the hands of the goons waiting outside. Perfect, all right. Back down we go. It was lucky it didn't land in that uh, drain. You watch though, we're gonna go down there and then some gust of wind is gonna take it just as we're about to pick it up or some rat is gonna come and nibble it. Okay, now this is a real goodbye, Lady Piermont. I will be back. Don't you worry. Oh. Just a minute, monsieur. What's your problem? No problem, if you cooperate. What do you want? Just a routine security check. Nothing to worry yourself about. Oh, well, all right. Search him, Flap. You bet. Hey, knock it off. Get off, you big ape. Nothing, Guido. Zilch! Our apologies, monsieur. What? I had to report you to the authorities. Round here, we are the authorities. You want I should break his arms? No. Let him go, Flap. You losers. You just got played. Let's go pick up our ancient manuscript lying on the floor. If the manuscript was what Flap and Guido were after, they were going to be disappointed. I couldn't wait to get back to Nico's apartment and check it out. Back in Nico's apartment. Hi, how are you? Oh, hi. Come in, Josh. Alright, I feel like a, a lot has happened already. Hasn't even been that long. How do we talk about... I want to talk about Lady Piermont. Screw all this stuff. <laughs> She's way more interesting. What are you doing to help trace the killer clown? Research, George. Yeah? You have a copy of the clown's yearbook? I have a telephone and lots of contacts. Oh. Well, did you find anything useful? Not yet. I'm employing my first and most useful weapon. What's that? Patience. Oh, I've heard of that. Isn't it a substitute for decisive thinking? Whoa, 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 whoa. Why, why all the aggression, George? Come on, you're meant to be working together. Oh, I don't like this attitude. Do you have a boyfriend? Not anymore. There was someone. A guy in my final year, but it didn't work out. Neither did my degree. I'm sorry. I'm not. Tell me more about your family. When I was a little girl, I used to spend the winter with my grandfather and grandma. They were the best times. Warm and safe in their tiny cottage. My grandfather rolled cigarettes while Grandma made hot chocolate and cakes. One day, he stopped his groaning. He put the lid back on his tobacco jar and took me in his arms. I laughed and wriggled, but he hushed me to be silent. With his unshaven chin all scratchy in my ear, he told me his secret. What did he say? He said, I don't smoke, but she likes to think I do. What a weird old man. 
Don't call my grandfather weird. He was the nicest guy ever. I wish I was back in that cottage instead of this crummy apartment in this noisy city. Uh, it does sound like a weird old man, sorry. <laughs> uh, also, we're learning a lot about Nico, but we're not learning much about George. Where's his backstory? His family, you know? Maybe it'll get onto that at some point. Uh, anyway, let's get on to the matter at hand. We have the show. <laughs> Do we try it on Nico? I think she'd like it. Hey, Nico, shake hands with me. No chance, Buster. No. Oh. I found this matchbook in the killer's hotel room. It's from the Club Alamut. Never heard of it. Is there anything written inside it? No. What were you expecting? If this was a movie, there'd be a clue. A name or an address. That's no use. There aren't even any matches in it. Oh well. I'll keep it as a souvenir. I love how she just completely... You just ignored the fact that we broke into the killer's hotel room and got this stuff. Come on, where's the appreciation for that? I found this in the killer's room. What is it? A credit card? ID. Thomas Merlin of the Gruber Electronics Corporation. Never heard of him or the company. And finally, the pièce de résistance. You're just not going to believe what I've found. It's not another part of the clown's costume, is it? It's a medieval manuscript. Khan left it in the safe at the Ubu. It's incredible! Is this what he took from Plantark? It could be, which means it's worth enough to kill for. Look there, two guys on the same horse. Oh yeah, maybe they couldn't afford one each. What of it? Have you ever heard of the Knights Templar? Their official seal was an image of two knights sharing a horse. Whatever this manuscript means, it's connected with the Templars. How come you know about these knights? I learned about them while writing an article on the Crusades. This guy, named Hughes de Payen, arrived one day at the court of King of Jerusalem. He offered to protect the Christian pilgrims from the displaced Muslim armies. The king would be able to guarantee safe transit to Christians in the Holy Land. Safer journeys meant more pilgrims, and pilgrims meant trade and wealth. The Templars proved invaluable to the king as a mercenary army. It was said that they never asked how many the enemy numbered, just where they were. And as the years went by, the Templars grew in wealth and numbers. They were so rich. Even kings came to them for loans, but at the height of their power, they fell foul of the King of France. He rounded them up and turned them over to the Inquisition. Thousands of Templars were subject to torture and confessed to heresy. Of course, at the end of the Inquisition, there wasn't much they wouldn't confess to. The last Grand Master Jacques de Molay was burned alive. But the treasure of the Knights Templar was never found. Jeez. So the treasure is hidden, waiting to be discovered? If there ever was a treasure, it's been lost for 600 years. Anyway, we're supposed to be investigating a serial killer, not a medieval treasure trove. But maybe that's what the clown and his accomplices are after. Maybe this manuscript is the key. You'd better leave it here for safekeeping. Um, okay, uh... Hopefully I would have done something to that cutscene by the time you're seeing this because that was really hard to hear. Like the the music was just too loud over Nico's narration. And also it just cut really randomly. I don't even know if that was meant to be the whole thing. Um so there's buried treasure, basically, is what I got from that. I'm gonna need to rewatch that. Um <laughs> Okay, so yeah, this we're 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 finding out more and hopefully this this really is turning into like Da Vinci Code, National Treasure, just like I said way back in episode one. Love it. Let's take another look at the manuscript. Hmm, okay. Lots to look at. But I think before we get into all of that, can I actually leave? No, I can't leave. Done, okay. Look there, two guys on the same horse. There's a guy with a sword and a bull. 
The only mythological bull I know of is the Minotaur, but he was only half bull. I don't think I'd like to be half a bull, even if it was the bottom half. What's that object between them? It looks like a gem on top of a tripod. Interesting. There's a guy working on a loom. He's weaving a carpet or a tapestry. Or a duvet cover. It's a clue to a place, I reckon. Somewhere famed for weaving and ships. Where folk live in barrels? It beats copper boxes. There's a woman looking at her reflection in a mirror, but the reflection has three hideous faces. She reminds me of the Wicked Queen in Snow White. She was the one who said mirror, mirror on the wall, wasn't she? She made me cry so much when I was a kid, Mom carried me out of the movie theater. She didn't frighten me in the least. Like I said, I was only a kid. I didn't like the crocodile in Peter Pan either. Oh yeah, to be fair, that was a bit scary, yeah. A knight with a crystal ball. Now, there's something written on the scroll beside the knight. Yes, but it's written in Latin. Per disciplinum mea lux videbis. By my teachings, you will see the light. You speak Latin? Where did you learn a trick like that? A trick? I studied law, okay? I can read Latin. Ma, you're touchy. Tell me that again. Let's face it, we need help, George. Someone who knows about these things. Who do you suggest? Indiana Jones? I know a guy who specializes in medieval studies. His name is Lobino. Huh. <laughs> Some stuffy old fossil who gets horny over ancient relics, I suppose. Far from it. Andre isn't the stereotypical professor you have in mind. Where can I find this Lobino guy? At the Krun Museum. I'll give you the address. Nice, okay. Well, I guess that would uh, give us another look at the parchment if we wanted to take another look, but I'm going to back out for now. I have to go. Okay. Don't forget to look for Lobino at the Krun Museum. All right, just completely leave. Uh, what did we just update on? Probably quite a lot. Uh, do -do 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 -do. Uh, Lady, oh, I already read a bit. It turned out to be an ancient manuscript, so that was what Plantard was killed for, but why? Showed Nico the manuscript, I think she was impressed. How could she not be? She knew right away that it was something to do with the Knights Templar, a hugely powerful medieval order with too few horses to go around, or something. But they had hidden treasure. Mm hmm. Very interesting. I'm liking where this is going. I'm liking the whole ancient medieval puzzles and clues and. Yeah, I guess next up we need to go find Lobino at the, uh, was it Kroon? Musée Kroon. Um, hopefully they can help us out with this. And um, yeah, I'm going to have to go and rewatch that cutscene and try and understand a bit more about the Knights Templar. But anyway, until then, thank you very much for watching and goodbye.